if you're not following me on Instagram, please do follow because we are uploading many behind the scene pictures and videos there. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll talk about uh, the classification of diseases and some important terms. So let us first classify diseases. And there are various ways in which we can classify diseases. So first is on the basis of duration. Certain diseases, they are... Uh, are long-term diseases. Long-term diseases means the duration is very long and the intensity of the symptoms is slow. Slowly and gradually those symptoms would aggravate. So here we will have two terms. One is called acute disease. Another is known as chronic disease. Acute diseases, they are short duration diseases. Short duration but the symptoms, they are of high intensity. Whereas chronic diseases, these are long term or long duration diseases and the symptoms are low intensity symptoms. Once we take the example, these two categories would be clear. If you're talking about normal rhinitis or cold, what happens? Suddenly you start feeling that uh, there is inflammation in the nasal epithelium. Uh, you start getting running nose, watery nose, watery eyes. There can be itching or irritation in the throat. Symptoms suddenly appear and in 2, 3, 4 days or maximum 7 days, the symptoms are going to subside. Now, in case of chronic, we can take the example of tuberculosis, TB. So, here the symptoms are coughing. So, the cough is not like very intense. You start coughing and the coughing persists for months, 3 months, 4 months, 6 months. The coughing, the symptoms persist. Low grade fever, it persists for months. In case of an acute one, whenever you have an infection, there would be fever 3, 4, 5 days and the symptoms would be gone or the disease would be cured. Here it is a long term disease and the symptoms persist for a very long period of time. So this is one way in which we can classify diseases. The second is infectious or non-infectious or non-infectious. Infectious means the infection spreads from one person to another person. So here if we take some examples where the infection, if a person has that particular uh, germ which is causing that uh, disease which we call the pathogen. We will be writing those terms. Pathogen is the disease causing organism. It can be a virus, a bacterium. So if a person has that pathogen and if it goes from that infected person to the healthy person, then the disease would be called infectious disease. How it spreads? It can spread through air. It can be a waterborne disease. It can be airborne disease. It can be through droplet infection. There are various uh, means in which the disease is going to spread. So if we are talking about this, cholera, which is an infectious disease. Non-infectious means if a person has that disease, it is not going to be transmitted to the healthy person. So here we can take the example of, say, diabetes. So if a person has diabetes, this disease is not going to be transmitted from that diabetic person to the normal or non-diabetic person. 
The third classification can be when do we get that disease? The time. Are we born with that disease or we get it after we are born? So that is congenital or acquired. Congenital is by birth. So if we are born with a disease, then that is called the congenital. Normally, these congenital diseases are genetic. Normally, they are genetic. So from the parents or from a parent, it will be passed on to the offspring or there is some kind of a mutation which takes place and the offspring is born with that disease. Now here we can take the example of say Down syndrome. And what is acquired? Acquired is a disease which you get after you're born. So it is after birth. Now after birth like everything, malaria, jaundice, all these are acquired. So after we are born, whenever we encounter that pathogen, those diseases um, we get. Now acquired diseases can again be classified into two categories. Communicable, non-communicable. That is again infectious and non-infectious. So after birth, suppose a person gets uh, cholera. So that becomes an acquired infectious disease. After birth, the person develops diabetic condition. So that will be acquired non-infectious diseases. So these are the ways in which we can classify. And the fourth and which is the most important and why am I writing important is this is the classification which is given in our NCRT. So this is on the basis of causative agent. On the basis of causative agents. Now Causative agents can be various. It can be bacteria. So we will call it bacterial diseases. Viral diseases. When virus is the causative agent. Protozoan diseases. When the causative agent is a protozoan. Fungal diseases, helminth diseases, these are on the basis of causative agents. Now, let us write down uh, one example of each. Bacterial disease, one most common is tuberculosis and we will be talking about all these diseases in detail. Viral disease is AIDS. Protozoan disease is malaria. Fungal disease is ringworm. And I'm giving you a very common uh, name, but there are many, many examples which we will be talking about later. And helminth diseases, it can be ascariasis, teniasis, and so on. Even elephantiasis, which is also known as filariasis. So, this is the way we are classifying the disease on the basis of the causative agent. And this causative agent is actually known as the pathogen. So, whenever we talk about the causative agent of a particular disease, that means we are talking about the pathogen. So, whenever we use these words pathogen, now we know what exactly we are talking about. So we said we will use some important terms also. One is pathogen. So now we know what is a pathogen. A pathogen is a causative agent. This is one word. Second word is prophylaxis. or prophylactic 
This means preventive. That means before you get the disease, you do something by which you prevent that pathogen from affecting you. And in this, we talk about immunization. We take vaccines. Why do we take vaccines? I'm sure you all have taken polio drops. So those polio drops are nothing but the vaccines. And these vaccines prevent that virus from affecting us. So this is prophylaxis. But if you get a disease, then there has to be some treatment and the treatment is done on the basis of the symptoms. Symptoms are the signs of a disease. For example, if a person has malaria, so how would the doctor know that this is malaria and not the, some other uh, fever? There are specific symptoms of malaria. You feel cold, which we call the cold stage. Then the temperature rises, we call it the hot stage. And then the temperature subsides by sweating. There is so much of sweating that your complete uh, body gets drenched in that sweat. So we call it wet stage. So those symptoms, those signs are the symptoms of that particular disease. And then starts the treatment. Now treatment can be of two categories. It can be symptom targeted or it could be pathogen targeted. And the best example is for malaria. Now whenever a person gets malaria, the symptom is high fever. And it is caused because of a protozoan that is plasmodium. So if you take, say, an antipyretic drug like crocin, what exactly are you trying? You are trying to <coughs> lower down the temperature. And fever or higher temperature is the symptom of that disease. So if you take crocin, you are not killing the pathogen. You are only reducing the symptom. So such a treatment is a symptom targeted uh, treatment. But if you are taking quinine, then that drug kills the pathogen. So the, that particular treatment will be pathogen targeted. So what exactly are we doing? Are we just trying to uh, reduce the symptom or are we trying to kill the pathogen? So that is the treatment part. It can be pathogen targeted, it can be symptom targeted. So these are few terms. In the next part, we will talk about few more terms like what is an epidemic, what is epidemiology, what is pandemic and so on. And then we will start with the further part of this chapter.